In this video, I'm gonna go through my top Power Query features and convince you that you should be learning it. But when I say learning it, there's really almost nothing to learn. The beauty of Power Query is that it's no code stroke, low code automation. It's button clicking to create, it's button clicking to edit. It will save you an absolute ton of time in all manner of things. And it's so simple and easy to use. Power Query is absolutely fantastic at dealing with dates and extracting information out of dates without having to write a single formula. So let's get this data here into Power Query. So we'll go to the data menu from data stroke range when we're clicking in our data. That's going to pull it into Power Query. And here it is. Now, if we change our date field to recognize as a date, so we'll click on there so that it now knows it's a date. When that column is highlighted, we have on both the transform menu and the add column menu, a date menu. And in this date menu, we can create, in this case, an extra column because we're in the add column for year. Let's do that. There we go. Instantly, we have a column for the year. Clicking back on date, we have a column for the month and even name of month. And there we go. There's certain things that you just simply would take forever to do in the grid of Excel that you can do in here instantly. For example, we have week, we have the week of the month. That's pretty difficult to do normally. Also, we can have the quarter of the year showing, and then we can get all this data straight back into Excel using close and load to, and just putting it as a table. I'll just put it on a new sheet and there it is. And if any of our data changes, for example, if I make that one into 1985 and go back here and then refresh it, you'll see that it was so quick, you didn't even see it, 1985 appears at the top instantly from that change. It's fairly straightforward to add things to the beginning or the end of a piece of text in the Excel grid, and it's just as simple in Power Query. In this example, I'm going to take what is currently a month, turn it into a date so that I can extract information that I wouldn't otherwise be able to get. So let's pull this into Power Query. So I'm going to click it in at the table from table stroke range. Now, at the moment, this is a piece of text saying the three letter name of the month. And if I tried to change that into a date, I would get an error. But what I can do is I can go to the add column menu and I'm going to, strangely on the format box, add a prefix for a new column. So I'm gonna create a new column and I'm gonna put a one and a hyphen on it. So it'll look as though it says the first of the month. I'm then gonna go transform, which just basically changes the same column you're on. And this time I'm going to add a suffix and I'm just going to put a year 2025 with a hyphen in front of it. So what I've effectively done is make it look like a date. And then when I click on here, I can hit date. It recognizes it as a date. And I can do things like put the quarter of the year on by saying add a column date quarter of the year. And now I wouldn't have been able to do that just from there. And I can also turn this month into a full month name by putting name of the month in as a brand new column as well. So I've effectively turned a three letter month name into the full month name without any kind of lookups or anything like that. That is good example use of prefixing and suffixing information. Another example I could say that I want to transform that by putting a prefix on saying uh, customer name and a colon and a space. And then we would get customer name appearing all the way down like that. If you want this information back in Excel in an automated way, then you can simply close and load two and put it on a brand new table in a new worksheet. And then anytime any of this source information changes, you can simply refresh this table and all those previous Power Query steps here will be performed on the new data instantly to give you the new results. 
Power Query can easily split and merge text where formulas in the Excel grid would be a lot of hard work. Let's separate out the customer name into first name and last name, and then maybe create a combined column of the ID and name. So let's do this in Power Query. So we'll say data from table stroke range. Here we are, we have the customer list into Power Query. So let's split this into first and last name. So the first thing I'm just going to actually do is duplicate this column because I don't want to change the original. We want the full customer name there. And then I'm going to split it and I'm going to split it by a delimiter. And you can see there's all sorts of other ways in which you could split a column automatically. I want a space because that is the delimiter that is appearing, but I don't want every occurrence because their middle names are going to start falling into, you know, separate columns and things. So I'm just going to pick the leftmost delimiter at the moment and hit OK. And now we have a split of first and essentially last, but it could be remaining names. It's given them a silly name, but we can change that up here by just editing this formula if we want. So we'll call that one first and remove the copy one thing. And we'll call this one last and remove the copy two name. There we have customer first name, customer last name. What if we want to create some kind of merger of columns? We simply click on the two columns we want and we've got two options. We can either on the transform menu, merge the columns as they stand which would basically remove the two existing columns and merge them as one. Or we could go to the add column menu and we see exactly the same name of control, but it will do it as a new column. So let's do that one, merge columns. We can pick from a list of separators. So we could just use a space again, or we can click on custom and we can type anything we want in here. So I'm going to put a space, a hyphen and another space. And what do I want it to be called? Or well, I don't want it to be called merged. I'm going to call it cust ID and name like that. And now we have a customer ID and name column. As usual, we can close and load that into our spreadsheet as a new worksheet and a new table. And it's completely dynamic using the refresh button. Every time some of this data changes, if I put a new customer in here, example called A0001 and I'll give this my name John then when I go in here and refresh this you'll see here I am appearing straight away. Power Query can perform instant maths on your data. And although you could argue that this is incredibly simple to do in the grid, for example, I could just multiply numbers together very easily. The beauty of Power Query is, of course, that it can pull this data in from external files and do the exact same thing. So let's move this table into Power Query. So data from table stroke range, that will put it into Power Query. And say we want to work out our product margin cost. We've got the percentage here, we've got the price. Hold down control and highlight those two columns. And we'll go to add a column and standard maths, we'll just multiply them together. Although it's given it a title multiplication, it has actually worked it out correctly. And we will change the word multiplication there to product margin. What about Product cost, well, product price minus product margin, subtract. And you can see there's all sorts of other things here, but let's pick subtract. It's called it subtraction in there, but let's call that product cost. We can multiply the stock quantity and the product cost together, for example, multiply those. We'll change it to uh, stock cost. Very, very simple maths that we can do to create these columns. But there's also plenty of other things that we can do. We have scientific calculations where we can work out square roots, logarithms and factorials. We can round, we can run trigonometry. We can even get information about whether numbers are even or odd or whether they're positive or negative, which will generate, for example, if I say on product margin, information sign, you'll get a one or a minus one 
column showing whether it's positive or negative, and that will allow you to further analyze the numbers in different ways. Of course, as with all things in Power Query, you can get this straight back into your Excel spreadsheet by close and load two, and you can put it as a table on a new worksheet amongst other things. And here's the data. And as soon as I hit the refresh button, this will refresh with anything new that appears in the original table it's linked to. For example, if I change that to 9999999, so we got a bit of an outlier there, and go back on here and refresh it, you can see straight away here that instantly appeared with new numbers at the top. And whatever you do to this table, incidentally, in terms of formats, so if I formatted that by hitting Control Space and Control Shift 5, to turn it into a percentage. When I refresh the data, it will retain my formats. So there you have it, numerous features of Power Query and why I think it will save you a ton of time and automate what you do. You'll just be able to click that refresh button. See you soon.